I went through this cancer thing and I just like realized who the people are that are, are there for me and what what are we really here for? What makes you happy? If this is your last moment, like how are you gonna spend it? I realized that is all that mattered to me. Time, um, quality time spent with people, happiness, um, and reaching your, your potential. We are live, uh, uh, finally, officially, uh, after um, a lot of, uh, a little bit of adversity, I should say. I am fortunate to have uh, this exceptional human with me today, Diana Vega. And I know I already said this, but I believe you have a super powerful story. And I am uh, grateful, I mean that, uh, for the opportunity to share it. And from, you know, humble beginnings to becoming a nurse uh, at the age of 19 in the Philippines, like that's crazy, uh, to then becoming a, a travel nurse in the, the United States. You, you just have an, an incredible journey uh, to share with us. Um, and you are obviously also a super talented mobile photographer. And I, I also want to acknowledge and call it out, and you know, I'm sure we'll talk more about it, but that was also inspired by uh, your battle uh, with cancer. Uh, and um, you are also a group instructor. Uh, you are a florist, a songwriter. Uh, you've used your many talents to cope with, uh, you know, really challenges as, you know, from my perspective and to, to give back to others. And I know you're a firm believer in volunteering and you um, dedicate your time and energy to uh, several different causes. So super fired up uh, to dive into your world. Uh, welcome to the show. How are you feeling? Oh my lord, Justin! Thank you so much for that intro. That was so, so many things. I'm so sorry. Well, hey, but, hey! First of all, hey, you did it! You did it! We are finally here. Let's clap that I up. We're finally Woo! here. Woo! Let's go. Adversity makes you stronger. Yeah, absolutely. The obstacle is the way. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Well, yeah. So how are you doing? I'm good. Um, I have 10 days off. So I'm feeling good. What are you what are you gonna do with all this uh, free choice time? I'm just gonna catch up on CEUs. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Right, you're gonna it sounds like you're gonna be productive and you're gonna be responsible. Yes, I'm gonna be a responsible girl. Get back into fitness again get a routine going on my 10 days and then get back to my old routine of working well let's let's dive in here so you had mentioned that uh, you started writing songs and you yeah. were write, writing songs to cope with the pandemic with covid and you mm -hmm. even sang to your patients um and co-workers yeah. performed uh which is just absolutely amazing like i want to acknowledge you i guess first uh that um, it's so cool. I would also like like to acknowledge first okay. the patience <laughs> of the patience of my coworkers and my patients for actually allowing me to do that because that could be either super funny or super awkward, and I've received both responses, but more <laughs> towards the receiving it in such a funny way because, um, well, I I wrote some songs like per from personal experience. Um, it was just like that one day I had to insert the cross stories in, in three out of four of my patients. And that just like inspired lyrics and, and I was sleepless and it, it was just, I don't know, the lyrics were just floating in my head. And then I just like brought out my ukulele and I told my coworkers like, listen to this, don't move, don't go away. <laughs> and they loved it. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, I'm sure yeah. it was some, pos some positive energy that was much needed in the moment. My, uh, my staff job that I left before traveling, they actually have like ukuleles in every unit. And um, now more of my coworkers are playing with it and not being shy about, about singing and playing. We are very multi-talented people, nurses. So, Absolutely. yeah. So did your uh, your musical career uh, get launched during COVID, or was this something you've always like been interested or passionate about? Well, number one, I'm Filipino, so karaoke is always <laughs> going to 
is my thing. <laughs> but yeah, it just started in COVID when I started learning, uh, uh, when I bought a ukulele from Amazon for $65. And then I just, and, and I love just like, you know, singing random songs in the shower or like when I'm driving, I'm just like singing how like terrible this traffic is. And so I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna see if I can learn some, some chords and then yeah. I made up my songs. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have to ask, cause you said, so karaoke, so like, what's your, what is your, your ultimate, like go to karaoke song? Oh gosh. I would have to say Bohemian Rhapsody Ooh. and total eclipse of the heart. <laughs> uh, great choices. Uh, e- exceptional musicians. Um, and tell me more as to why why bohemian rhapsody yeah. yes why did um, why does that why is that like for you only because it's one of the hardest songs to sing and there's <laughs> so much like variation and it and for me to like hit all hit try to hit all of those and fail it's just so amazing and funny and yeah. what a what an adventure each and every time i try to sing that song yeah. it's different yeah yeah <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, uh, going back, you mentioned, obviously, well, and I, I touched on this, obviously, in the, kind of introducing you is like, uh, you started your career in the Philippines, and then you came mm-hmm. here. So like, what was that transition like? Oh, my goodness. It's, it's a different world, literally. Um, nursing school was a blur for me. And after, after I graduated, I tried doing um computer school for a little bit. And then um, I went into emergency nursing. After that, I did um, clinical instructorship because the emergency room nursing was making me only a dollar an hour and that's not working out for me. Wow. So, and it was so high stress. You're only the, you're the only nurse in that eight hour shift and you have two doctors it's a small emergency room. It's like a six bed capacity that turns into like a 25 bed, uh, 25 people. And then, um, yeah, I became a clinical instructor that does not involve any technology that this, it was more towards like classroom setting and also towards theories and stuff. And coming to the United States, all of a sudden you're at this medical surgical unit. I had got two weeks of orientation it it was just learning while I was going that w- I was just leaning towards I'm going to ask for help <laughs> I'm just going to try to absorb as much as I can I didn't want to go home I just wanted to stay in the hospital and just learn everything that I could but but yeah yeah it it was so hard and I started at Kindred Hospital what which Kindred in Orange County yeah Kindred Hospital in Westminster and I thought that was normal for America. Oh, oh! so this is how hospitals are over here. <laughs> I have no idea. Can you explain for like, I guess the audience, like what type of, because okay. Kindred's not uh, what a uh, normal hospital that most people would think, yeah. think about. So can yeah. you explain a little bit to, I guess, to the audience what that type of facility is? It's more about long-term um, care. So when the patient's no longer required to be in acute hospitals, they, but they need to continue um, ventilator care or IV antibiotics or pain management or even wound care. They go to long-term acute facilities like um, Kindred Hospital or if they yep. need to work on physical therapy, occupational therapy and such. And my patients, I was in the med surge um, unit and my patients were, they're confused or obtunded totally got they've been there for six months or three months they're so contracted i have to get their their ivs on their foot and i have their traped or vented and um yeah they're all like all the all sorts of tubes coming out of their bodies but i only had a maximum of five patients and um that is the beauty of being in california but um yeah it was it was all learning for me i loved that experience i thought that was normal and then i moved on to a cardiac acute hospital and i was in a cardiac unit and my patients were walking talking and they were 
just participating and they were so easy and that that became my life i i was just so floored that wow it yeah. this is actually easy although for some people it's so hard for them and it can get pretty hard um when emergencies happen um i'm 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 like oh i've experienced harder things seems like that experience you know it's made you more resilient um and it has made you probably more uh resourceful too i i would imagine and so um can you tell tell me about a time like that uh you know you had to use your ingenuity um in a challenging situation and kind of like what you like learned from it does anything come to mind two interesting situations one where i had a vet who saw me, he, he went to the Vietnam War and he saw me and he thought I was Vietnamese and he just like went on this angry rant and he, he was like out of control. And I just like told my manager, you know what? It's okay, I can switch with another patient. And it's better like that than, than pushing myself to this patient that I can take care of you very well. And I don't need to prove myself basically we can just like you know adapt to the situation and then all was well my patient was taken care of by, by my preceptee at the time who was received very well by this patient and we had no problems another situation is a very a very irate patient was was complaining about the whole vegan thing like she's vegan and the the kitchen does not respect her nobody is is compassionate towards her. She has stage four cancer. And um, when I just realized that, that being curious, being more curious towards why this patient is so irate and trying to do what you can to make, to solve the problem is actually helped me and, and helped me understand what this patient's really going through. She's not really upset with me. She's not really upset with the nutritionist, with the kitchen. She's not upset with the doctor. She's just upset about what's going on in her life and she has no control. And this is all that she can control is that what kind of food she, she gets on her table and what kind of care she gets in that hour. And yeah, it just makes me feel bad for, for people and makes me want to see what I can do at that moment for them. So you obviously, you know, that second story that you shared, you know, she was uh, a cancer patient, obviously. And so you, you have had your own experience in battle, you know, with, with uh, cancer. And I don't know how much you want to share about your actual experience. You're wel welcome to, but obviously I, the one thing I, I'm, you know, want to um, ask you uh, about is, you know, well, that and kind of how you developed your, you know, your resilience through that experience, but also how bridging the gap of how that led to your um aspiring mobile photography career as well and everything you're, you're doing with with that um and you you mentioned something i remember that um and the feedback you gave me about you started to see like the world more vividly because of going through that experience and um so how and, and like your shift in perspective impacted uh your approach uh to really just life i guess i had cancer when i was 29 I was um, three years into being here in the United States and that, that came out of nowhere because um, I had no family history. I was pretty healthy. I was so young. I should be partying and living it up. And uh, yeah, it just came out of nowhere. And um, I had surgery, radiation and chemotherapy. And those were, were very, very hard things to go through. And um, I'm already before before it happened, I already had a very happy and um, upbeat personality, I guess. Like yeah. I was very shy, but um, I, I was so excited about the new world that I'm in. I'm in America, come on. <laughs> like it, this is a dream for most people. And so, um, yeah, I was so excited with my life and I, I didn't want to waste it. And then so I, I, I went through this cancer thing and I just like realized the people around me, like who they really are, like who the people are that are, are there for me and what what are we really here for what makes you happy if this is your last moment like how are you going to spend it <clears throat> do you really want to um be a millionaire or do my dreams before were like 
financial security for my family. But then I realized that if I did that for them, then how, what are, what are their purpose going to be? I can't do that for my siblings. They have to learn it for themselves. If I did everything for my siblings and provide, provided everything for them, I am robbing them the opportunity of working hard and learning the values of hard work and doing it for themselves. They won't value it at all. And, and that I shouldn't um, hide myself. I shouldn't shrink myself just to allow other people to be themselves because you can allow everyone to be themselves and it's okay and you can also allow yourself to to express yourself in as long as you're respecting everyone and yeah i i realized that is all that mattered to me time um quality time spent with people happiness um and reaching your your potential I love that that is how you approach uh, what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Just talk a little bit about like what you do with like your your passion for f- photography. I use my iPhone yeah. for for my photos. And the reason why I chose to do that, um, I started in 2015 after I um, was done with chemotherapy. I became introspective. I started hiking and just like doing stuff on my own. Loved going to the beach. Loved, uh, loved the flower. But first, <laughs> I'm Asian. I love taking pictures. That's just normal for me. Okay. <laughs> and um, when, when I recovered from everything, I just thought like, I don't know. I just, I just feel like my vision is becoming super vivid and everything is so colorful and everybody's so beautiful. Like uh, everybody's filtered and I, I just see the world that way. I try to see the best in people. And so, yeah, I started with nature and I started sharing it on my social media and my friends have encouraged me and told me that why don't you take photos of people? And so my uh, first model is my adopted mom, Luciana, and uh, she's easily gorgeous Brazilian woman. And she has all these gorgeous dresses that she just keeps in her closet. And I said, you know what, my bear, let's go. 5 a.m. We were at Laguna Beach and she was just barefoot on the rocks. And she posed for me and we had a great time and people loved it and started hiring me for photos. Yeah, I just like had a bunch of models that are are willing to pose for me, like people that I adored, of course. And and then and then it morphed into events. Um, I and the the ease of using the iPhone for me is while people mostly post just for these photos that they they have me take, they just post it on social media. So it doesn't really need to be like high resolution or anything like that. Sure. But mostly for content. So I just airdrop it to them at the end of the session. And that that's it. The ease of it is is it's instant, basically. It's instant. Um with events, I would be hired for three hours or two hours. And while they're eating or doing their thing, when I, when I can squeeze time, I just do quick edits if it needs to be edited. And then at the end of the event, I airdrop everything to them. And, that, and that's it. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's amazing. It's uh, very, very efficient. There's, it's, there's no drag in the process at all. Yeah. It like, which um, makes, makes total sense. Do you plan on like, like expanding or like growing uh, your, what you're doing now? Yes, I definitely want to um, eventually travel with people who who want a personal selfie stick. (laughs) (laughs) I definitely want that. I want to work with. Yeah, I want to work with influencers Mm -hmm. if that's if that's what they want to do. I want to. I I love events. Events. uh, I just did one um, last week in Henderson where there was like this. Uh, meeting amongst women and then I just like snapped pictures and some videos I made a reel out of it and they loved it they absolutely loved it and I, I love when they received my work um, with with gratefulness and they were they were so excited about it I love that 
Yeah, that's awesome. I want to actually take this as a quick opportunity to uh, talk to the audience um, specifically uh, and say for anyone um, that li is listening to this and, and or watching it, um, uh, drop it in the comments who you think Diana should work with. If you have any suggestions, um, please uh, let us know. And on that note, how ca how can um, uh, people find you online? I'm on Instagram. My handle is Dystopia Diana. One word. Thanks, Justin. Hey, my, uh, my pleasure. So um, I know you. Um, you volunteer, obviously. You uh, mm -hmm. are. Um, um, you know, big into that and you have experience with, um, we are ocean and also, yes. uh, stronger together. And so, uh, yeah, yes. let's go. Um, uh, <laughs> so, um, seeing the impact, um, that even basic services, uh, can have on people's lives, right? You're, you, you have seen that you've lived it, um, through everything that you do. How, how would you encourage other um, healthcare professionals to get involved in volunteer work and give back to their communities like you're doing? We work only three days a week. Well, at least I do. Mm -hmm. And there's so much time left for us. And I know um, people are going to school and other stuff, but like giving back to the community, which gives us so much. I've received so much from the community. This is why I, I like to give back in my little, little ways. Um, it's it's so fulfilling. I love the feeling of, of just like knowing that my time is being spent well, although it's just picking up trash from the beach or but going to the Dominican Republic and going to Bonnie and, and meeting all these happy, happy people that barely have nothing, just flip flops and walked miles and miles to get to where we are. That is amazing to me. They they were dressed to the to the most beautiful clothes that they have, like the, their Sunday's best, just to be seen by the doctor and be seen by these nurses from America. It it's so humbling. I at least it's so fun. You get to meet other nurses. You get to meet all these people. I mean, Matt Matt is amazing. Ryan Sandow, who like got like travel nurse takeover and and medventure Ryan. Um, I cannot believe my life that I know these people. I cannot believe it. They are such givers. They're people who, who just want to, to get people together to help others. And I'm just so grateful that I know them and that I am enjoying living what they created for us, which is helping other people. Yeah. And yeah, Matt, Matt. Gerwitz, he he is so selfless. What an amazing man! I can't believe he's single. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they know he's single. Uh, now they so, know. <laughs> yeah, now. So you hear that? Um, no, this is this is my choice, though. He he said this is my choice, but yeah, like he just he's so. De I cannot believe that such people exist. You know, really, other than than you know Mother Teresa, who really like live off of service to others yeah. and it just melts my heart and gives me so much hope for humanity really humans are amazing yeah yeah so so selfless and you said yeah to be in and others. and this is out of their own experiences of need like they they came into this this time of adversity like jack for example the founder of we are ocean um he went through cancer and he he wanted to share the calm of the ocean towards others. He wanted to share the 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 power of adventure to change your your mindset towards cancer. And um, unfortunately, he's going through it again right now. But he's powering through. This weekend, actually tomorrow, they're going to to paddle through the Channel Islands with all these oh, like wow. cancer survivors, like in an outrigger boat. Like it's I think it's a five man boat, and of course there's going to be so so many like like firefighters and like like all these all these like important <laughs> lifesavers that that are going to be there supporting them but yeah he just wanted to share that with others and this is why he built we are ocean and because of that because he wanted others to experience surfing i've never surfed in my life 
I stood up for for what like probably 0 0.09 seconds and at, because of that experience I thought oh what else can I do yeah. it gave me so much power I did not know how to swim and now I'm jumping off piers mm -hmm. it's crazy it's so crazy the the power that it gives you just by just by being with these like-minded people so volunteerism and seeing seeing I, I was I volunteered as a nurse, but I saw there's this girl, her name is Nancy, and she's a, a double, like two time, two time cancer survivor, kidney and breast. And she was so scared of the water. She had like uh, uh she had this vest, she had like a donut, she <laughs> she had all this stuff, and she was so terrified, like trembling terrified. But on the third day she she jumped off of the pier alongside us we were all with her we all jumped with her and that was so beautiful to see because now she knows that she can do whatever she puts her mind into that's amazing just uh, learning and growing there's something beautiful in that uh really for for all of us to always mm -hmm. you know, just takes a little like a good example takes just a little bit of courage once in a while to get outside of that comfort zone absolutely it just not just a push from yourself it's so hard to to give yourself a push yeah but if you surround yourself with the right people or just like be blind and just like do it yeah yeah <laughs> just do it yeah just go for it just <laughs> jump in all in i love it yeah yeah so um what one um one thing I want to, I guess, kind of go back to is uh, you mentioned that family dynamics and coping mechanisms are your jam. Um, and uh, uh, if you were to write a song um, inspired by, you know, uh, your observations of, of patients uh, and their families, what would be the title of said song and, and what would be the message you would want to convey? Oh my gosh. We're gonna get a we're gonna get a live performance on the show right now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> that that's hard because families families are hard. But I have a song ready about about nurses um and constipation. So is like are some of your songs like kind of uh, humor based or yeah. 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 Are you, so you have a song is that, are, do you like literally have a song? Like you're prepared to, yeah, to do that's it right now? My first nursing. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. You, you want to hear it? Well, yes, of course. First time ever. I got to say first time <laughs> oh, ever in the history we get a live musical performance. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Diana Vega. Woo! Five, six, seven, and Nursing is such a hard job, especially when I have my period. It's a bloody mess inside my panties. I need to stuff my face with coffee and pastries. Nursing is such a hard job when my patients are constipated. Pointy finger is so smelly From all the fingering I have done lately It's shitty I need to educate I need to medicate I need to advocate I need to meditate So I don't slap the hell out of somebody because nursing is such a hard job, baby. Uh, straight to number one on the charts. Bill, billboard, <laughs> watch out now. Uh, that's going go to number one. Um, I'm going on record <laughs> saying that. Uh, well, uh, I love that. Thank you for uh, for your vulnerability right there to uh, drop a little a, a little uh, performance live on the show. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for letting me do that. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it is my pleasure. Well, um, what one uh, thing I I'm hoping you're down to do um, is a uh, three questions rapid fire responses in less than 30 seconds. Um, 
Is is that something you're game for? Sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, first up, three, two, one. Uh, how has traveling changed your life? I have become even more adaptable and richer and more friends more than ever. One pro tip for the travel nurse experience. Do not be shy. Just get on there and tell someone, hi, my name is Diana. How can I help you? What is your definition of a successful 13-week travel assignment? See as, as much as you can in that city. Meet as many people as you can. And the best way to meet them is through MedVenture and Travel Nurse Takeover. And you will never be alone a day in your life. That is facts. Well, first, let's clap it up. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Great work. Uh, you crushed that. And yes, uh, that is facts. Um, TNT MedVenture. Oh, so speaking of uh, MedVenture, are you um, are you going to summer camp? Are you going to be there? Of course I am. Are you going to be there? Yes, I am. Because I was like, if you're not coming, then I'm not going. Sorry, Ryan and Emily. Nah. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, <laughs> But yes, I am going. And so you're going. Uh, that's awesome. I'm yeah, fired up for it. I have a job to do. Oh, can, uh, can you can you uh, give us a little sneak peek as to what your your job is, or is that under wraps? Oh, I'll I'll just be I'll just be covering. I'll just be taking photos, taking uh, videos, making reels. I'll just be up in people's faces and yeah. So uh, the content creator that's for enjoy. Med, for for Med Venture Camp. Well, uh, this has been um, a ridiculously good time. Yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure, and thank you so much. Uh, I want to give you the gratitude uh, for making this happen. I'm so grateful for you, Justin. I don't know what you saw in me, but thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>